King G. Gross sight. ENT. <laughs> Rock with it. Rock with it. Rock with it. Rock with it. Let me, let me pop my shit. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pop my shit. Hands up. What's going on, Ryan? How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Mister Mister Antoine, the cameraman, our <laughs> audio man, video man. What's up? All of that, all of that. <laughs> Welcome to this interview. I am very excited to get started to interview um you as one of the hosts of the Blurred Mob. I'm sure the um, fans and those interested that listen to the podcast are very interested. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump into it. Bet, bet. All right, so. Today, I got a list of questions that I want to ask you. Um, hopefully, we can get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, I hope you get as much out of it as I'll get out of it. So, um, All right. let's go ahead with the first one. First question I want to ask is, in your own words, what is a blurred? A blurred, the, by the book, a black nerd, in my opinion, it is a black person who has passions isn't afraid to express them, isn't afraid to talk about them, geek out about it, and take pride in it. I never even heard of the term blurred until like three years ago. But once I started u- utilizing it and seeing the community behind it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a community. Yeah, I, it's something that's new to me as well. Um, I think with the start of this podcast, it's not something that I heard of that much. But I think it's pretty interesting, you know, how many people are actually, you know, considering themselves to be blurred, you know. Yeah. It, it is a pretty big community. But it's like, it's not one of those communities that a lot of people just know about. But if you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. I think that's what makes it pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, like nerd used to have like a negative connotation. Like we always saw those story, those archetypes and shows, the glasses mm-hmm. with the tape in the middle. Yeah. But I like blurred because it's like, no, nah, we come in yeah. multiple shapes, forms. Yeah. You can be a nerd about basketball or a nerd about anime. I, yeah, I think you can be a blurred about a lot of things. And uh, I think it just welcomes a lot of people. Like you, like you kind of just said, you know, there used to be that stereotype of being a nerd back in the past. You know, we were all middle school, high school nerds get bullied, yeah. and type, all that type of stuff. Now we grown now, you know, we, we, we can be adults about it. We black nerds, yeah. you know, we like yeah. anime type stuff like that. You know, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. No, ain't nothing wrong with <laughs> that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Ain't nothing>. Exactly. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't get bullied though. You know, my nerdy <laughs> friends, they'll be doing a Naruto run and stuff. I'd be like, y'all don't do that. It look cool, but don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I was, <laughs> I watch I watch them get bullied. <laughs> so I know. So I'm not gonna lie. I used to do the Naruto run, but I didn't do it in school though. I so <laughs> did it. Look, bro, did it in my backyard. I, I didn't did try it. to run up trees. <laughs> my <laughs> brothers, my brothers used to bully me though because I used to. Think, <laughs> I used to try to, because I'm the little brother, I used to try to outrun them, and I used to think if I did, you know, put my arms behind my back, I was running faster. They used to just grab me by the arms and stuff, man. I used to... <laughs> I was like, like showing out the sock. <laughs> the run is not working. <laughs> it's, not, it's not working. Every time I did, I felt got off balance. I was like, I don't even... Like, is my lean off? Am I supposed to be on my toes or something? I, I'll fall. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, maybe my chakra concentration just ain't doing it for me. <laughs> uh, bro, be be real with me, dog. How many times did you try doing the fireball juice or the sh- or the um, oh Chidori in your bro? Oh, oh my god, me and my brother. <laughs> we, we, used to, we used to have a trampoline. So my oldest brother, we used to have a trampoline. We used to have like mm-hmm. um, uh, I, I don't know what to call it, but we used to pretend like we were like a Neji Hinata type thing, like fighting on the trampoline. So we used to be. <laughs> Battling like we were Hugas on the trampoline. First of all, he's bigger than me. So, he's so bigger than me. Y'all doing yeah, so, 64 palms yeah, and so, all that? so, you know, we like hitting each other like this. This man is bigger than me. Every time he hit me, it's like, okay, now calm down. This is a little hard. This is, this is, <laughs> but I'm talking about we used to be like real life ninja. I'm like learning how to do the, like the stuff, you know, the hand signs, all that type of stuff. Like maybe if I concentrate real good, some fire going to come out. It ain't never come out. But, you know, I feel... <laughs> but you felt it in your soul. Though. I felt like, it you, in my soul. You felt it there. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Maybe one day. Maybe. <laughs> maybe It'll come I, out eventually. Maybe if I get trained, you know. Maybe if I get trained by the right person. <laughs> Bro, you remember like about a year and a half ago when um it was gonna be a solstice and black folks thought we was gonna get oh superpowers. My. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! First of all, it, I, it was one of them type of things. It was like, I'm not going to take it serious, but you know, if it if it happened, you know, Look, I'm going to like pick out the blinds, you know, to see if anybody, you yeah. know, got their superpowers. But you know, I ain't go, 
I ain't gonna take it serious. I, <laughs> I think I sent y'all the picture in my group chat. I had the cup with the water and a yeah. spinach leaf on top from Hunter yeah. Turner. I was in that, <laughs> that little water distillation. I was like, come on, let it turn sweet because I'm gonna become a transmuter. I'm finna, I'm finna be Hisoka and Killua. Watch me. Watch me. <laughs> yeah, they had they had a lot of black folks in the chokehold with that one. I don't even know where it, I don't even know where it came from, to be honest, but I it just, I just know it became a thing. It's like somebody must have said it. Must have been a tweet or something and it blew up. And they had us all. <laughs> they had us all. I was ready though. I was ready because y'all wasn't to tell me nothing. <laughs> I remember Foop was like, Y'all gonna become Ninja Turtles. I said, Not me. I'm gonna become a Nin Master. Not a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> you got the wrong Nin. I'm a Nin Master, not a Ninja Turtle. Nah, that's that's wrong. That's what we wake up as Ninja Turtles. All right. Uh uh, that's crazy. But let's go ahead and go to the next question though. Um, I guess what made you join the Blurred Mob? Um, honestly, me, Foop, and Ralph, you know, we always had our nerdy conversations. You was you was always there. Like when we'll be in the dorms in college, we would talk about what could Super Smash Bros. the next game after Ultimate be for like four or five hours. Yeah. And when and when Foop came up with the idea to make a podcast, I was like, okay, this yeah. is just doing more of what we already do came on as a guest in almost every episode and then after that she made me and ralph official host and i was like look i enjoy it we just doing more of what we already do it's just now we're be- being recorded and i don't mind that All right because it started yeah that's right it started out as just um porsche at first and then you mm-hmm. know the team grew um it was you uh ralph and i and i came in as background guy to do what i do but you know yeah, I, th- I I completely agree with that. You know, we used to talk for hours back in college, Jackson State. About random stuff. Random bro. stuff. And <laughs> so I think it was only right to make a podcast, you know. Might as well mm-hmm. talk about it, in, you know, on the internet so people can hear it. Because I'm sure a lot of people yeah. also have these same type of conversations that we have, you know. So it's interesting just, to see opinions. <laughs> just got to just gotta avoid trying to get canceled. Don't want to offend nobody. You know That's saying? true. You got to be real careful. Real careful. You can't say yeah. nothing out of the way. I'm talking Look, about nothing. <laughs> when you make a statement, put allegedly behind it. Nah, for when real. When you about to say something <laughs> controversial, say in my opinion. My opinion. <laughs> even, then, even then, though, it's like, we don't care that that's just your opinion. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> I you disagree. Me, I don't I, like. Me. I, I disagree. You going to hell? <laughs> <laughs> Your opinion is trash. I'm like, bro. I'm sorry. All I'm said, sorry, bro. All I said was good more than anime fans, and I'm getting bashed. Uh, you know, <laughs> just, look, look, bro. Look, bro. I just said that Dragon Ball Z ain't the best, and that Naruto's cool, but it fell off. Die. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you die. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I, did I hurt you? <laughs> you know, nah, for real. Uh, cause pillow to cry on. It's like we get it. Everybody, everybody is free to have their own opinions, but you don't gotta bash people for this. Is my right. opinion. Calm down. I, I don't right, have to agree bro. with you with everything. If I agree with everything you said, there's no point in me having a podcast. Because what's the point of having a conversation? What's the point? We all just gonna say yep, exactly. yep. I agree. Exactly, man. That's it. Five minute episode. That's it. <laughs> all right and i and i love the blur mob because you know yeah i'm trying not try, try not to get political but when it comes to like a lot of black oriented podcasts a lot of them are mostly about relationships and stuff and i was like this is different yeah. this is new let's talk about yeah. stuff that takes you out of reality that's yeah. actually fun <laughs> you I, know yeah, what I, I mean? agree with that we ain't got to talk about negative stuff all the time you know black people we can talk about the things that we're actually interested in that's not yeah. the norm you know about what celebrities doing all that type of stuff we you know we got other interests and hobbies exactly. and stuff, you know so i i completely agree i love it so. it's more than just lebron and give me a black celebrity and beyonce it's more than lebron and beyonce LeBron, Beyonce, all them folks. It's, I don't pay attention. I like to, yeah, when I'm at work, I like to listen to stuff like this. Yeah, 100. So, we spoke a lot about anime. Next question. What are the big three anime in your own eyes? Okay. Okay. This is the one question I took notes on. I'm not going to lie to you. So, so, let me cook. Let me cook. <laughs> You about to cook. The, the cook. original, <laughs> like, I'm going to talk, I got all three of them right here in manga format. <laughs> Let me talk about it. The big three will always be the big three. 
One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, in that order by popular demand. Mm-hmm. Bleach should be number one for now. I'm loving One Piece. But the big three, the top three selling manga, the most notorious anime for a whole 15-year time period from 20, 2000 to 2015. There's no denying that. Nobody can change it. Nobody can just take on the title. It, they will always be the big three. But, but that's no fun. So I'll give you my new big three, Antoine. I'll give you my new big three. Okay, I okay. feel like they're separate. I feel like for from 2000 to 2015, that generation, Naruto, Bleach, One Piece. No changing that. Okay. 2016 through 2020, I'll honestly give it to Attack on Titan, My Hero, and Black Clover. Okay. And that... In that time period, I don't think you could ever argue their popularity. I don't mm-hmm. think you could argue the quality of animation, the mm-hmm. story. I don't think you could argue that. Yeah. Till this day, Attack on Titan is even doing really good now and My Hero. Yeah. But from 2021 through 2025, and this involves a little bit of predictions, I feel like the current big three, Demon Slayer, Fire Force, Jujutsu Kaisen. Okay. I was going to say that. I was going to say something about Demon Slayer. Yeah. You know, they coming out, you know, releasing real slow, but you know... When they do release, though, yeah, yeah. banger, chokehold, banger. <laughs> and we know, we already know it's gonna hit. We already know. And, <laughs> and look, bro, Demon Slayer broke records, bro, in terms of manga sales. The Mugen Train movie, one of the yeah. most top grossing anime movies of all time, yeah. And Jujutsu Kaisen, the manga, outsells One Piece every now and then. Mm, I didn't know that. But by, by long look, bro, the current big three is those three. Mm. Fire Force could be knocked out by Chainsaw Man, but for now, I'm going to keep Fire Force in there. Hmm. So, for Fire Force, is the manga still going or is that over? It just ended. Just okay. ended. Okay. And I'm waiting for the manga box set if it come, if it makes one. So, that means they still got some more uh, animated series coming out. Is that what you... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, it's the lower tier of this new generation of Big 3 because a lot of people can't get past the, um, can't get past Old Girl. And all of her little <laughs> fan service moments. Yeah. But I still love it. I still love it. Okay. Okay. All right. So we talked about Naruto for a minute. Question for you. Yaku Gun or Shar- Sharing Gun? Mmm. Mmm. To have personally what time period of Naruto? Like, give me give me a little bit more detail. <clears throat> what time period? Okay, okay, okay. Because it's okay, not okay. that easy to be honest. Okay, so I, I'll give I'll give you the entire like knowing what we know all the way up until I guess I'll say Baruto because um when Baruto came out we kind of got more information about the capabilities of the Byakugan. gun some yeah. things that we kind of didn't know back in um, OG Naruto and also Shippuden. So I'll give you all the way up until that point. And Sharingan, I think. We kind of know, yeah. You know, okay. We kind of know about Sharingan. Okay. So, are you going to grow up? <laughs> Do you want to grow up? Okay. So, let's say you're trying to become, you know, powerful like any other ninja would. Mm-hmm. You're trying to grow up, but trying to um, become powerful. Do you want the Sharingan? <laughs> Do you want to go the route of the Sharingan, or do you want to go the route of the Hyuga? If I was a ninja, bro, I'm going Byakugan. I'm sorry. Itachi and Sasuke are my favorite characters, bro. They're my favorite anime characters, bro. But let's be real. For your shorty gun to get strong, you gotta become <laughs> depressed. You gotta see your best friend, family member die. <laughs> then, then if you want Monkey Co, let's say you want Monkey Co to keep it and not go blind and be bleeding out your eyes every damn day, you gotta steal your brother, or your relatives, um, Monkey Co shorty gun. Whoever so is they gotta to be, you. they gotta be depressed one to get to that point. Then you gotta take their eyes <laughs> and get them, bro. Give me the octagon every day, bro. I don't want that. You know, I don't want that. I always wanted Sharingan. Okay, wait, wait. Before I'm not saying I would go the Sharingan route, but I always okay. wanted Sharingan because you know Sus- Susano, all of that type of stuff. I'm like, this is cool. These p- folks are producing these giant. I don't even know these armored figures. You know, they strong. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I wanted that. But do I want to go, <laughs> man? Do I want to go to Route of Sasuke? No, no, <laughs> no. Mm-mm. I'm good, bro. bro. <laughs> Legit, bro. For the Uchiha to like take over, say if Itachi never killed him off, it would take 
100 kids, close siblings, like a family of four in every household. Each of those kids got to lose their best friend. Mm Mm-hmm. And then those siblings got to take each other's eyes for them to just be the strongest family in the entire ninja nation, the right. ninja world. Right. That's too much. For Versus the Hilga, I just got to train and get wrinkles in my eyes. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I I, I, I agree with that. I, if I did not have to kill the person that's closest to me or something like that, steal their eyes, because I, I, that's a lot. That's a lot. If I, If I didn't have to do that, I'm going the Sharon Gun route, but you know, I don't want that. I don't want that trauma in my life. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just stick to the Bianca Gun. I feel like the Bianca Gun is gonna give me what I need. I, that's, I, I'm good. I'm good. Like, bro, let's really talk about it. Itachi had a random sickness. You know what that sickness was? It was stress. Mm. It was sadness. Mm. He was upset at life. He had nothing to live for anymore. Yeah. That's why he got sick, bro. Yeah, it, you gotta like the amount of depression that man must have had. I'm talking about he was. I think he was. He wasn't he popping pills or something like that. He was taking. He was taking something. He had to be popping something. He was taking something, and I'm like, man, when we finally found out the truth of Itachi, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah somebody put put him, take him out of his misery. Oh my god, put him, put him, in, a, put him in a mental ward so he don't hurt himself. Like and put Sasuke in right after him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro, I'm sorry, bro. No, the shardy gun. It's fun to watch. No, don't want it. Keep it over there. I I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. I, all right. <laughs> let's let's move on to the next one. All right. So, if you had the opportunity to train under any sensei from any anime, who would it be? I ain't gonna cap this one. Mm. I slick. Don't have an answer for you. No, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. Does Shanks from One Piece count as a sensei? I haven't. Mm, I haven't or just a men- or just a mentor to Luffy. He, if if you, can- I guess I, if, Luffy probably considers him a mentor. I haven't seen him do a lot of mentoring, but <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, if you if you can't say him, if you can't if you can't definitely say him, uh, I'll pick Rengoku from Demon Slayer. He taught um, Michiri how to um, use um, fire fire, well, not fire style. We talking about too much anime. <laughs> what you what you call that little sword arts or whatever in um, Demon Slayer? Uh, fire fire uh, form. Uh, so, uh, whatever. Yeah, flame. I know. What you, I know. What you're talking about. <laughs> he, he taught he taught a flame um, sword play. So I'm picking Rengoku. Because okay. my whole thing is Kakashi trash. <laughs> Ur- Urahara from Bleach treats Ichigo like a science experiment. <laughs> um I don't want nobody, none of them. I don't want I- Asuma was cool in Naruto, but he died. A no. guy said say would make me want to die. I don't like him. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I would have picked like Fairy Tales Guild Master, but I don't think he counts. But I'll pick Rengoku. He taught Michiri how to use um flame sword play, flame style, however you call it. Mm. He's pretty cool, motivational, and mm. when you s- don't want to spoil anything from Swordsmith Village Art, but you'll learn more about her love style of sword play. Mm. I I'll pick Rengoku. He'll oh. motivate me. He's optimistic. I think he'll be patient with me. I think I think that's a pretty fair choice. Yeah, I I, mm-hmm. I agree with that. A lot I, I did see on Twitter they were having that debate about the uh sensei from Naruto and everybody said Kakashi was trash. I think Kakashi did the best he could. I think he no. did the best he could. No. Look what he had to deal with. Look what no. he had to deal with. <laughs> no. Kakashi yeah. belongs in a mental war just like Itachi. Do you, oh, do you, come on. He was stressed. Kakashi. He was stressed. He's, he's like he, he like one of them black parents that was like I did the best I could. Girl, how, just, how, how did Kaka- tell me what did Kakashi do to teach Sakura? How did he train Sakura after teaching her how to run up trees? Be honest, be honest. After that arc, before they fought Zabuza, in that arc when they fought Zabuza, and he taught them how to run up trees. What did he teach Sakura after that? I I don't know. He. I don't know. I don't know. He, 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 <laughs> abandoned, 
he abandoned Naruto and Sakura to teach Sasuke how to use Chidori because that was his favorite little um student. He did. What, he did. What? Oh, he helped Naruto learn uh, styles to turn to make the Rasen sure can note. Bro, he sat yeah. there. He sat there. Yamato had the wood and the waterfall. Kakashi just sat there. It's like, hey, we're friends, right? Maybe he just opened doors for them. <laughs> what doors? <laughs> what doors? <laughs> what doors? <laughs> the only person he cared about was Sasuke. Kakashi did nothing. He did nothing. He was there to the end. Jiraiya <laughs> no! was there till the Just, end. If I had and to past pick, the end, if I had to pick, I'd definitely say Jiraiya. I, well, Jiraiya would stress me out though. I don't know about that. Jiraiya <laughs> would stress me out. Jiraiya so would get know. me arrested. I, 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 yeah, I don't know about that. I kind of take that back. I, super cool guy, but I don't know about that. <laughs> Jiraiya's the guy you go to the bar and to get drinks with when he's talking yeah. about women the entire time. I, I That's couldn't it. have Jiraiya. That thing. man stressed Naruto out so much. That's. I don't think I. He, I I think people watch so much Shippuden they forget about Ochi Naruto. This man pushed Naruto down a gorg and said, "Hey, he learn something, Jutsu." He, he did, and I'm like, I just feel like <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a lot of things that we could have did before this. Before, this, <laughs> before you jump to this, okay? Yeah, I'm I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Look, I'm look, bro. <laughs> Rengoku Sensei, Senpai, I'm picking him. I'd almost pick Tengen, Tengen, but I want him to steal my girl. I'm picking Rengoku. Okay. I feel you on that. I feel you. All right. Let's go into um the next question. All right. It's kind of a debatable question a lot. I know for myself. What was your favorite childhood game growing up? What's funny? This question was hard for two seconds, and then I had to be realistic. Mm-hmm. People would assume Smash Brothers, Mario Kart. Do you want to know the one game that I've probably played over 300 hours in, and it's the same game? Not a different iteration in the game, franchise, the same game. Mm-hmm. That is Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim. I, till this day, can talk about Skyrim's individual quest line like I played it yesterday. <laughs> When I bought it in middle school, I bought the game guide, and it was like the size of a Bible. Oh, and I'm in class reading quest line story backgrounds. Oh, I'm reading God. the <laughs> histories of different. I'm reading the histories of different races in the game. I bought the complete edition again for Xbox Series X. Mm. I bought another game guide because it was a collector's edition game guide. Yeah, I listened to the music in Skyrim. I put in like 300 hours in the Skyrim and made like. Five different characters and did full playthroughs for each of them. That's fair. I got to go with Skyrim. That's fair. I think yeah. I think it comes down to that which which game you played the most. It's like I got a, I had a lot of favorites growing up. I wasn't mm-hmm. very good at games growing up, <laughs> so I didn't make it far. Sure. I didn't make it far in the games, but I loved them. <laughs> you, you you say that until we start playing Smash Bros in college <laughs> and. It, for the for the longest I was running the thing, then out of the blue, you and Ace came in, and I'm like, "Where did this competition come from?" <laughs> I my first my first uh Smash Bros game was on um it was GameCube, it was Smash Bros Melee, and we yeah, played man. me and my cousins played so many hours of Smash Bros. It is it, I not, it, honestly because I didn't know a lot about like games back then. We was kind of just buying random games. I think. It like it was just this mm-hmm. random game. I was like, "Oh, I know a lot of these characters. Let me get this game. That might be fun. It's a fighting game." Man, Fair enough. we sat in front of that TV. I'm talking about like this close to the TV. Oh, uh, just playing Smash Bros. up to like two, three in the morning, just fighting. Yeah, I was trash, because <laughs> I was the who, youngest. Who was, who was your go-to character? It was Link. It was still Link even back then. Yeah, okay, Link. It was Link okay. back then. Yeah, I was trash with him, but you know, against them, <laughs> against them computers though. Yeah. But fire, you know, fire. <laughs> set them, you set them to nine as well, and you just going straight, straight yeah. fire. Yeah, straight fire. But against my cousins and stuff, they was it was whooping me. I was, <laughs> but I, I I wouldn't even say that was my like top play. Well, my most played game back then. I think I, I think I'd have to give it uh, to probably like like something like Spyro or Zelda. I was one of those. Spyro was cool. It was cool. I like the. They had this one version that came out on Xbox that I really enjoyed. I'll give mm-hmm. you Spyro, but was I it? expected Zelda to be your first pick. I, I, it would. Ha- okay, I was very trash at the game. I was very trash, and I did not make it far. So I had um, 
the Wind Waker one, I want to say. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but I was trash at it. I What about Ocarina of Time? I, I want to say I had it. I was trash at that too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like I was I was not very good at Zelda yeah. games. I did not make it far. First of all, some of them used to kind of creep me out. So that that alone, and then I was I just I don't know. I just wasn't very good. And I think it was later on that I came back. You know, I'm a little older. I was like, you know, mm-hmm. I still got this game queue. Let me try to beat this game. And I made it very far. I still didn't beat it because I ended up losing my progress on my middle, on my memory card. I think I was in college by this time, like beginning of college. So I lost my memory and I didn't beat the game. But I still love it. I still love it. So, did, did you cry? Did you cry after? I. Mm. No. A little teary eyed. I, I, I was very upset though, but I, I didn't cry because. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I think it was like a. I was like I said, I was in college, so I think it was like a. Whenever I came home, I would got, like kind of just pick up from where I left off. It must have been that one time I came home and I was like, "Where is my safe progress?" And so I just sat there. And I'm like, you know what? Obviously, it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be for me to beat this game. But till this day, I still think about you know trying to find one of them old style games and beating it because I think mm-hmm. that would. But I think that would really just satisfy me. But. Uh, I've watched like the ending of them on like YouTube and stuff, so I'm good for now. I was just about to say, just enjoy the, just enjoy the YouTube videos where they be like, "This is what happened to Zelda." Catch up with the story. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm cool. I'm satisfied. <laughs> I, I, I didn't beat it myself. Somebody else did, and I I envisioned myself doing it. I played through their eyes, so I'm cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let's hey. move. Let's move on to the next one. All right, this was kind of um left turn, so. If you had to choose one brand to wear for the rest of your life, which would it be? This is like clothing brands, shoe brands, ex- uh, accessories, all that type of stuff, you know. Which would it be? I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, this one was tough. I For the audience, I wanted to prepare my answers for some of these questions. I couldn't. Um, but I think I'll just default and say Nike. The That's- only reason I'm gonna say Nike. The only reason I'm gonna say Nike. I can't think of too many brands that still make good shoes shirts pants and outwear because if i can only want wear wear one brand i need to be warm in the winter mm-hmm. i need to be cool in the summer mm-hmm. and i need my kicks to look nice yeah and nike was the only one you can I, I, some people are, yeah i'll be chilling in sweatpants every day but i work from home anyway so i don't care <laughs> <laughs> you can't really go wrong with Nike because I guess uh, they make so much, so many, uh, so much variety. Yeah. I mean, like Nike hats, accessories, they make all that type of stuff. Running shoes, casual shoes, the clothing, you know, you can do a lot with Nike. And you can't, you really can't go wrong. They, I think they make all types of stuff, phone cases, all that type. <laughs> so Exactly. You really can't exactly. go wrong. I, I think that's a fair choice. If I had to choose, yeah, it would, it would definitely have to be Nike. I, and I, I ain't think, picking Adidas. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> only thing I wear from Adidas is Yeezy. Don't cancel me, y'all. But that's the only thing I wear from Adidas. Ooh, yeah, you canceled now. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably am, but this video is going to get flagged. I'm sorry. <laughs> Poop going to be mad at me. <laughs> you have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just bleep it in the video editing. <laughs> Not on this podcast, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that to yourself. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I would definitely choose Nike. I think my everyday, I'm always wearing Nike anyway. This is a Nike hat, so I, I'm always wearing Nike. I got a lot of Nike shoes. My, clothing my head too big for hats, so you know I can't relate to that part. But you know, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you enjoy hats. I hate that for you, but yeah, <laughs> you're you 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 wear hats nicely. Like you're you're a cool hat guy. I just you know I wanted to wear hats. I got. All this brain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> As in, all that, <laughs> all that brain, uh, yeah. yeah, all that brain. Yeah. Yeah. That's your mama used to tell you. You just, it just means you're smart. It just means you're exactly. Smart. exactly. Look, bro, you wanna know it's crazy? I, I was just in town for Christmas, and my mom was like, um, she asked me about something. It was like, why your beard don't fill in right here? And you know, my dad at the table. I'm like, it's y'all fault. You, why, why your hair? It's your fault. You losing my head, big. I can't wear hats. It's your fault. You were the foundation of this. <laughs> I completely agree with that. I think every every male and maybe even the females get to an age and we start paying attention to you know our dad's features. Because I started yeah. looking. My dad has been bald for a very long time. I've never seen that man with hair. 
So I'm like, is it because you bald at it? You know, you started you know, the hairline started receding at a young age, or you just prefer this? Because I need to know. These are questions that need answers. Yeah. <laughs> I need to prepare myself mentally for this. <laughs> Look, bro, I'm gonna make myself real vulnerable. Them corners get me get a little light. Get my barber answer. be having to put the little black spray in there. And my dad been bald since I've been alive. And I'm like, show me some pictures when you had hair. I had waves, son. I said, no, 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 no. When did it start coming out? It never went out. I just started shaking. No, no, yeah. no, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> At least you I got. At least you got the beard. I I was never blessed with a nice beard. I, I mean, you got chin hair. <laughs> you got this right here. That that, that 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 get the job done. Yeah, but I got spiky. I ain't, yeah, I ain't gonna get it. <laughs> Look, it's high. It's high. Uh, it's Mine enough. ain't all the way full yet. It's it's. I'm still missing this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel you. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to the next one. All right. So paying notice to your collection. You know, we've all seen it on the podcast. From your um Funko Pops, which would you say is your most prized? Mm, where's she at? Where's she at? This right here. Carla from Fairy Tale. Really? That's surprising. So, so here's the funny thing. I you expect me to say like my favorite character? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's the thing. Funkos have been out for a good minute, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of them are vaulted. Vaulted basically means they ain't producing them no more. Carla from Carla from Fairy Tale is vaulted. I wanted every main character from Fairy Tale because they already had a great line, and I could not find Carla anywhere. I mean, I went to like ten different Funko stores, and this one place called like Frank and Sons that has like five different Funko stores in it, mm-hmm. and they only open every weekend in LA. Mm-hmm. And I was running up in there. I literally had to picture folks. It's like I don't know. You might find her. Try this Funko store. I'll go to that Funko store. Try that Funko store. I'll go to that Funko store. I don't know. You might find it somewhere. And on eBay and what night, she was always $100 plus. Really? Yes, bro. I couldn't find her anywhere until I found this one Instagram account. They were selling Carla Funk. They had one Carla Funko in stock, but it was damaged. And it was like, Mm -hmm. we got for like $30. I said, send me the pictures. Let me see what it looked like. And the damage wasn't that bad to me. I would flip it for a hundred dollars if I felt like selling it, and wow. I bought it there. Wow, that's that's surprising. That is really surprising. So, yeah. do you have the other ones? Um, like Happy, um, and what's his yeah. name? Um, Guy, I forget his name. Not too Happy. Lucy got Erza, Gray, Gajil, Panther, that's- Lily. Yeah. Wow. Now, what would replace Carla is Soul Leader because all of the Soul Leader line is vaulted. But, like, Def the Kid, I had to spend, like, good money on him. But the funny thing about Def the Kid, I would see him in stores. I will see Marka and Soul as well. They were just all expensive, and I never bought them. But I never saw Carla anywhere. Wow. Charlotte Lou, however happy, call her in Fairy Tale. But the other ones is kind of just easy to find from Fairy yeah, Tale. Bro. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, huh? they were tough, but Arizona, I literally found her, like, hidden behind the Arizona Funko I did not want. And I was like, got it. And Wendy. Found one place that had like five of them. Mm-hmm. Got them. Wow. I, I yeah. That's that's real surprising. That's okay. Let's he, shop, he, let's he was like, there. I just know this man go say a Demon yeah. Slayer, Bleach, <laughs> Demon Slayer, top character from Bleach, something like that. You know, yeah. I, look. One of the ones that's just I don't know. Like I don't know. I, that's it. Okay. That's these that's were easy. <laughs> these were easy. I ain't gonna cap to you. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's understandable. Yeah, the main ones be kind of easy to find. Okay. Okay, that's 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 different. A little shock there. <laughs> he said, "This is a good question. I I didn't expect this. <laughs> okay, yeah, I didn't expect that at all." <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I don't know if you've mentioned this on the podcast. So recent studies that one hundred percent do not exist. I just made them up. <laughs> have found that most people's favorite anime characters are the ones that they relate to the most. Mm-hmm. So why do you love Hisoka so much? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> how do I preface this? I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna give a very, um, 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 philosophical answer. Yeah. So, you ever seen those graphs where it was like good, evil, lawful, chaotic, and neutral? Mm-hmm. So I'm a chaotic, neutral person. I follow the law when it supports me. I don't necessarily do good or evil for the sake of being the best person alive or a bad person. 
if it's if it falls into my desires, I'm gonna do it. Okay. That's the same type of character that Hisoka is. I relate to him on that level. Hisoka wants to fight. He gonna fight. One day he wanna invade the Phantom Troop, fight Crollo, and then the next day he's he like, "Oh, your man going." He wants to look at you know. No, children. no, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. He wants to <laughs> fight Gon at his peak because he enjoys seeing his growth as a Nin user. Same for Killua. Yeah, he I wants mean, to pluck mm-hmm. the flowers once they once they have fully bloomed. I think he's plucking them a little too early. I would disagree. If 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 if, if you look at Greed Island, he supported them, <laughs> helped them to beat that guy who was throwing the strong volleyballs, and I feel like he's almost a great mentor. Oh my life. god! <laughs> he, uh, 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 he's he's a quality this is adversary. What, this is what we call reaching. <laughs> this it, is what this, this, but. But you know how you reach the peak of a mountain because it's a it's the challenge. Hisoka gives them a visual peak to reach. He's scaring those children. <laughs> he is training or or assisting those children in becoming peak name users. <laughs> he don't you have a Hisoka Funko Pop? <laughs> I have the diamond edition of that real sparkly. Oh. <laughs> real sparkly. And it's sparkly. Yeah, it, gl- it got glitter it got glitter on it. <laughs> <laughs> you you're really, you're really not helping your case here. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, bro, listen, bro, listen, bro. I don't care, bro. I was a dream code, bro. And there was this girl who had on a Hisoka cosplay. I was like, we Hisoka fans are far and few between. She said, yeah. <laughs> yes. He only wants to, he, he admires them for their power, not because they're boys. And I was like, exactly, bro. Uh, exactly. Uh, you might have to defend that one in court. <laughs> you to, yeah, you might have to just have to give a strong case on that way. <laughs> Get you a, yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, bro. That's what. That's why I enjoy Hisoka as a character. Very polarizing, strong, I feel you. excellent it's, transmuter. It's, user. As long as you can defend it. If if you're gonna like Hisoka as a character, you're gonna have to follow it up though with some hard arguments. Same thing with Orochimaru. You go have okay. Orochimaru's a bit different, but Hisoka, you gonna have he's. Orochimaru be having snakes coming out his mouth <laughs> and swallowing swords, and that 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 go. <laughs> Hisoka had an orgasm during the battlefield. I'll give you that. But Hirochimaru would be doing some real sus stuff. I, I, I don't know. Don't, those two are just the pedos. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think everybody knows. Those are the, yeah. <laughs> Orochimaru kissed Sasuke on his neck to put, yeah, he to gave put the, a tattoo he on gave it. That man a, now. He gave that man a hickey. <laughs> <laughs> Like, come on, bro. I'm sorry. He's so good as bad as a Rochimaru. <laughs> That's true. Like, he, he giving 12-year-old boys hickeys in a forest. Yes. And- <laughs> so if you're going to defend them, if you're going to say, I like these characters, you better have an argument. I, <laughs> you better have I like argument. to see, I would like to meet somebody whose favorite character is Rochimaru. I ain't going to lie. I want to see what their argument is. Probably my brother. <laughs> Probably my brother. <laughs> and my brother. And we, yeah. Put him on the podcast. We have to get him on the podcast. <laughs> it's a <good> <laughs> Featured guest. Yeah, I. Oh my god, it, it, it's a real. Inter- <laughs> it's a real interesting. I, I, I give it to you. You know, you defend them. So hey, you do you. You, <laughs> you do you. <laughs> I feel you. All right, next question. All right, so you just won one million dollars. What's the first thing you buy? Hmm. All right. Let me give my financial because I, I like talking finances. First, I'm going to invest in some stocks. Okay. I'm gonna max out my yeah. Roth IRA contributions. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get some blue chip stocks and some index funds. Yeah. But 
after 500 grand of that, it's like in that, so I can, you know, have a nice little passive income. Yeah. I'm buying all my manga. I'm buying my Funkos I missed out on. <laughs> These $250 Soul and Maka Funkos, I'm getting them for $250 each because that's how much they cost. And I'm getting that F-150 Lightning. Mm-hmm. No cap. <laughs> that's the best electric vehicle. It's cold. I always wanted F-150. Yep. And I'm getting the, the platinum um, trim for it. Really? Really? So, so you would be yep. ready for the you know EV. You're ready for that, pretty much. If you got the money, yeah. I guess, you'd be ready for it. Well, if I, if guess, I had the money. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I'm, right? in a big, I'm in a big city now. Would I have to struggle once I try driving home and I got to go extra routes to char- to reach the charging stations on time? Yes. But I had a million dollars. I can do that. Can do that. I invested it first. I invested Look. some money. I, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, you definitely going to have to invest on You know, that's everybody's smart answer. Yeah. You know, I'm going to invest a little money, you know. Then I'm gonna have my fun, you know. I'm gonna get that car, or I'm gonna get that house. I'm, gonna, you know, we gonna have our fun with it, cause I'm definitely gonna give me some type. I don't even know. I don't even know what. I don't even know what car I would want. It's definitely gonna be a foreign car. <laughs> you get a foreign. I definitely Listen, get a foreign car. The only reason I don't want a foreign is because even BMWs cost a lot to fix up. That's Them true. old changes like two hundred dollars. That's, that's true. I give you that. Ah. I'm getting an F-150 because, one, I'm getting the lightning, so I don't need no oil change. What, a battery change? I don't know, tire rotation? Yeah. What do they? What do EVs get? I'm good on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you talking about, if you get a Lamborghini, it's gonna cut, you're going to need another million dollars to manage the you're upkeep. Right, right. It's going to be my luxury car. I'm driving that to, you know, special events. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling up a Lambo or Ferrari. Now I'm interviewing with you. <laughs> It's going to be nice. It's gonna, but okay, I feel you on that. I feel you. I, I agree with that. Bet you some money. I might have to do a little. I think I want to get into like a little real estate, you know? You know, I think okay. I, I think I want to do that. I think it'd be fun. But you, you know. Uh, if you had that kind of money, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like you could like probably buy you like a duplex, probably a town home, rent it out. Mm-hmm. You could you could make some cool consistent money after. Nice little neighborhood or something. You know, the housing market is already yeah. trash, so I'd be making some money. <laughs> bro, I'm waiting for it to sink. Right. These houses cost too much, bro. I'm, I'm waiting for a four hundred thousand dollar house to be worth a hundred k, and I'm gonna buy my first home. Man, what I'm talking about? I want the nice house with the ghetto prices. That's, that's yeah. a, that, that, man. What, bro? bro <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry to the boomers and all of them who in their fifties and sixties with retirement accounts. I want y'all houses to be affordable, bro. Y'all had it. Y'all had y'all family. I want a house too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> all right. So let's bring it all back to the podcast. So what makes the Blurred Mob podcast unique in your opinion? Hmm. Honestly, what I like the most about myself, like what sticks out to me, me, Fu, and Ralph all have our own individual passions. Mm -hmm. This podcast isn't solely focused on comics. It's not solely focused on video games, not solely focused on anime, not solely focused on fashion. It has a whole bunch of different topics, themes that we address. We'll talk about tech one day to talking about when's the next Avatar series coming out. And what makes it unique is that you get a wide array of opinions on a wide array of on a wide array of topics in each episode. We also have our verses where we're competing passionately about different topics, whether it's which is the best Jordan silhouette, which anime world would you live in? And I think what makes it unique is the variety. Like. If you go to different podcasts, you're going to see music industry Mm -hmm. and it's not all music. It's just hip hop. I like hip hop. But, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing somebody's opinion on, like, country music, even though I don't like it, or country, EDM. Country, pop, all that type stuff, you know. It, ex- exactly. Yeah. And, like, for us to be a blurred, focused podcast that talks about a different amount of topics, I feel like that was that's what makes us the most unique. Right. I agree with that. Because I think um, before I joined the podcast and I was kind of seeing the different things that you guys were doing, um, I was like, oh, okay, I didn't really expect that. I, You know, I was expecting, you know, you guys to stick to the norm, like, I guess, of nerd you know uh the anime the manga the 
mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. the DC, the uh, Marvel type stuff like that. But y'all talk about, like you said, like Jordans and all that type stuff. I think I think that is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's something different, you know, different audience. Mm-hmm. So I, I like that. I think the uh, podcast is pretty unique. I I enjoy listening during my spare time at work and all that (laughs) you know when i'm working real hard and stuff (laughs) and and it's also you know like me foop and ralph we ain't like carbon copies of each other Mm -hmm. like i'm the guy you and me we can talk anime all day Mm -hmm. but anybody who's friends with food she'll talk she'll talk your ear off about some dc DC, you'll be a you get some coffee or get her favorite look. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Y'all gonna be talking about DC and Marvel all oh, day, and she gonna pull, she gonna pull out that stuff that you are gonna be like, oh, I didn't even know about that. You should, like, exactly. So, so yeah, I think she can talk about it. She she can go on. She can... <laughs> exactly. And one thing I like about Ralph, you know, Ralph in in my opinion is probably the most in, to- in touch with culture and like the subtle nuance about like how does this affect black people mm-hmm. the production behind this how this director went through a lot of this and that yeah. like you know his, even his ratings from the woman king like even when you look at our mob reviews and how we're in the, how we individually appreciate or how we feel individually impacted yeah. by different movies and series yeah. i like how even as people we got our own different themes and you see a, vi- a variety in that yeah i think right Ra- Ralph is always that oddball uh, like even like during the versus tuesdays Ralph is always God, have, oddball. Like, like so so when i the odd man out or i say so i say that as in like he i feel like he dis he he always has a different opinion well i'm not gonna say mm-hmm. always but a lot of times he has like a different opinion and i think i appreciate that from him because he's like you guys would be like oh that, if you guys say, oh, that was trash, that was trash, he's going to be like, oh, well, I appreciated this part about it. You know, I was like, Ralph is always, he's going to be different. He's going to yeah. always say something different. You, know? you, you could somewhat predict me and Foop's opinions on different stuff because you understand, but Ralph is going to be the one that surprises you yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Tuesdays when it's his turn to go, I'm just like, what's he going to say? Yeah. What's he yeah. going to say? <laughs> <laughs> and he always pulls, he just always pulls some out. And I'd be like, okay. Okay, that's different. That's different. I expect that. It makes that. a valid argument. He makes a valid makes argument. Valid argument. I, I give it to him. So I, I, I definitely appreciate the different personalities on the podcast. You know, like we were kind of saying earlier, if everybody just agreed on the same thing, what are we doing this for? What are we doing? Exactly. I think I appreciate the arguments, the debates, because y'all be tripping me out. <laughs> y'all, be, y'all be tripping me out. <laughs> <laughs> So hey, I, bro. They yeah. they get wild. They get wild. <laughs> it, gets, it gets real passionate on the pot, the blurred my pa- podcast. I, so I appreciate yeah. it. I, I love it though. Keeping that energy. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Would you ever consider doing the podcast as your full time work? And if so, I guess what boxes net need to be checked? You know, for you to leave your current full time job to say I want to do podcasts. You know, to make my so, um, primary income. So I try to avoid talking about my job too much because, you know, it is corporate and it got a lot of nuance to what I do corporate from a corporate perspective. I don't want my my opinions on different topics to be tied to it. Mm -hmm. But for me to do the podcast, one, it got matched my salary. I'm sorry. (laughs) This this stuff costs money. And this stuff costs money. He said, "I got like having got about them pop on uh, Funko Pops." <laughs> Look, y'all be y'all be seeing the gaps in my teeth. I want to get braces soon, so I need that dental insurance. I need my HSA. I need my four hundred one k covered. Um, I get the cold every winter, mo- at least once a year. Last uh, had COVID not too long ago, like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. So I need I need some health insurance. Yeah, you know I'm, what I'm saying? You know, getting on up there, you know. <laughs> so, so, so I'm asking for a lot, but if it ever gets to the point where the Blair mob could like at the very least match my salary and I see the workload probably conflicts with my current job, that would be where I'll probably decide to like do the podcast fully. Like if it shows that potential, if the income is there, we got our own studio. I would love to do that. If we can have our own studio, we're actually all in front of the camera in one room together. Mm-hmm. Those have to be the boxes that get checked off. I think I think that would be nice. Yeah. You know. Of course, mm-hmm. that income is pretty important, <laughs> but you got to be able to, you know, build the podcast up. So, you know, get some income, you know, you still got to live, you know, exactly. <laughs> so all that type stuff. I agree with that. I think, I think if it did check all of those, bo- if it did check all of those uh, boxes, doing a podcast for, you know, full time would be fun. <laughs> I get to sit behind the computer or a camera and, you know, talk about what I love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> That's it. There we go. Dream job. The ESP <laughs> the ESPN of nerd and blurred um <laughs> topics. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So next question. What motivates you to keep making content for the Blurred Mob podcast? What motivates me? Yeah. Um, probably the content itself. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, bro, when I see a new announcement for a video game or a show, one, I can't talk, wait to talk about it with my friends. And my friends are the ones on this podcast, <laughs> are the people on the podcast. Yes. So probably the content and you guys, like, like, for example, I don't know if we're going to talk about it in the next episode, but just seeing the Avatar news about we're trying to get an Earthbending Avatar in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait to talk about what what that what may that may look like with our predictions. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's going to be after the Legend of Core in terms of the um time period. So it's going to be modern. They're going to be Earthbending with cell phones in their hand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I you think know, it would be more modern. So yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'll say it's the content and the people on the podcast that motivate me to keep making it yeah yeah that's understandable you know you like talking about it anyway might as well put it on as well put it, it on the internet I, <laughs> it, it, it beats talking about it you know to myself and then people i might think i'm crazy you know? <laughs> he in the mirror talking to himself did you like that yeah. episode i did love that episode <laughs> I did love and look laughing at my own jokes like bro you funny <laughs> you funny funny you funny <laughs> you funny funny <laughs> And they just don't know. <laughs> this is quality content. Ain't nobody gonna know. I'm producing in my mirror. <laughs> I should if I just put a camera in front of me, I might get YouTube monetized. Look, <laughs> you never know. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, what have you learned from being on the Blurred My Podcast? Um. Hmm. What have I learned? One, and this might sound cliche, when you're doing something you love, it don't feel like work. Yeah. Um, two, there are a variety of opinions. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how we talked about how Ralph would like throw them um wild cards out in different episodes. Yeah. Food done shocked me on some occasions too. Like when we doing a mob review, I'm thinking, oh, I think we all hate this, you know, because I hated it, you know what I'm saying? And then we have an honest conversation. It's like, nah, I, I enjoyed it. Or we're doing a versus. And I'm like, I would assume that Ralph and Foop will probably pick um this class in terms of what they'll teach for um ho- in Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. Watch our last versus. <laughs> uh, but you know what I'm saying? I think I one of, one of the things I learned is like a lot of people have various opinions. And one, you got to respect them. Yeah. You got to acknowledge them. Yeah. And there's a good way to disagree. You know what I'm saying? Not every disagreement comes with you trash. Yeah, <laughs> it can just be, it can just be I understand, but I don't I don't agree. Well, we're gonna trash talk each other regardless. But you know, it don't got to be like I hate your soul. <laughs> <laughs> don't hate my how that perfect soul go. <laughs> can't take my soul, so I hate your soul. <laughs> well, I'm like, jeez, bro, calm down. <laughs> calm take down, Jamal. Don't pill, pull out the bro. nine. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Go take a chill, chill pill. Just take a couple of NyQuil's and you'll be a okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mix with your Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, next question. And this might this might be my last question for the day. Um, So, what can we expect from the Blurred Mop Podcast in 2023? Innovation and expansion. Yes, I sounded like Tim Cook or somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but we have a lo- every day, well, every time we meet, and then every day when me and Foop just be talking all- during our downtime, we're discussing new ideas. We're discussing ways to make the regular episodes better, working on our thumbnails, working on the content with how to express different topics, how to elevate versus. So we're constantly trying to innovate what we got going on. And y'all are going to see a lot of that in 2023. Expansion. You seen it, Antoine? Our ideas backlog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's steep. And those ain't just ideas of like one line. Like we got our descriptions, how we're going to do it, time frame for it. Foop just sent us a text about one of the ideas in our backlog. Y'all are going to like it. Yeah. 
pretty much so I almost got to line up for the whole year. <laughs> Guess, it yeah. just be so much to talk about. It's just, <laughs> we, we got a whole lineup already, and we may not even be able to execute on all of it in 2023. Right. So innovation and, ex- and expansion, definitely. Okay, okay. Really excited for it, you know. New year. I am too. New year, new podcast. <laughs> new year, new podcast. <laughs> Might have Antoine on the episode. New host, new host. Woo woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. Ryan. Well, those are all the questions that I had for you um, for the interview. I hope you have enjoyed it just as much as I've enjoyed it. I've had a good time talking with I've you. Enjoyed it. I've enjoyed your answers to a lot of the questions. <laughs> some, of the, <laughs> some of the shockers, you, you caught me off guard with some of them, but I appreciate it, you know, so I've enjoyed this. Um, I do wish you, of course, and the rest of the team, the best on in 2023. Um, so good luck to you guys. Uh, and with that being said, I guess we can check out. Peace. Peace. Hands up. If you love him when you ain't stand ten toes down, shot ain't no looking at. Ain't no looking mad. You can let them haters hate when they ask him why I'm smiling.